Hey everyone, Woodstock here. So I just caught the newest Dragon Ball movie in theaters and thought it could be a nice and simple thing to put together before I got into some bigger projects on this channel. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't really watched Dragon Ball since I was eight, maybe even ten years old. This wasn't really an anime that I ever kept up with, but sitting down for this movie definitely makes me think fixing that wouldn't be too bad of an idea. So let's get into a plot summary. Following the events of Dragon Ball Super, Broly, Goku and Vegeta are currently hanging out on Beerus' planet with Broly himself, wanting to help the big guy get his power under better control. And that's cool, I guess. Now let's move on to the Earth, where the old pricks from the Red Ribbon Army are rebuilding their operation with the assistance of their newest partner, Dr. Hito, the grandson of the late Dr. Garo. With Hito, they've created two new androids dubbed Gamma 1 and Gamma 2, with an even bigger threat waiting in the wings. They send out two to pick off Piccolo, who decides to fake being killed so we can get a better look at what the operation they have going on is. And sure enough, it's nothing good. So he has to cajole Gohan into getting back into action while his father and Vegeta are off-world. Will he succeed? Well, what the hell do you think? <laughs> Bros. In a rather surprising move, Dragon Ball Super Superhero abandons traditional 2D cell animation for 3D computer-generated animation. When I sat down, I figured to be watching a straightforward traditional anime picture, but instead I was hit with some 3D animation. Admittedly, this is 3D animation that does a pretty good job of looking like 2D. I definitely noticed the difference at first, but by the end of the film, I wasn't really thinking about it. I just felt like I was watching a normal anime, so good job, guys. Christopher Sabat, in typical Christopher Sabat fashion, kills it as Piccolo. He aces it as this ice-cold personality who can still be kind and affable to the people around him. He's not a particularly cuddly man, but he still cares about people immensely. He's not the type to greet you with a great big hug, but he'll still communicate that he cares for you and respects you. And plus, the actual Piccolo character is just an amazing fighter. Do not mess with this man if you value your continued existence. Kyle Herbert is back once again as the one and only Son Gohan. And speaking as someone who has not followed Dragon Ball in well over a decade, I really like this character. Imagine your standard Midwestern sitcom dad, if they were secretly one of the greatest warriors in the universe, but were still more inclined to do research on things like butterflies and ants and insects. Now imagine if that character suddenly went Liam Neeson and taken on some people because his little girl is missing. That is Gohan in this movie, and that is why Gohan is so freaking awesome in this movie. A sheepish, unassuming man who will absolutely destroy you if he perceives you as a threat to his family. Come to think of it, that seems like a pretty good Superman characterization. The Gammas are very fun characters. Gamma 1 is a very serious, stoic individual, your typical Captain America type, played very well by Alex Lee. Gamma 2 is a wisecracking, smart mouth, always ready for a quip, a trait played perfectly by Xena Robinson, the gentleman who portrayed Hawks on My Hero Academia. Gohan's daughter Pan is the most precious little girl ever who can also physically destroy an ordinary man with no effort. I would willingly lay down my life for this child, but I get the feeling that won't be necessary. To say a Dragon Ball movie has good action is to say ice cream is yummy or to say, a glass of ice water on a hot day is very refreshing. You would be right, but you would also be stating the blindingly obvious. With that said, Dragon Ball Super Superhero has very, very good animation and very, very exciting action. Who would have thought? I have more specific comments for this movie, but I don't want to spoil anything, so one last thing before we get into the cons. This movie was surprisingly funny. I had a few good laughs while watching this, so yeah, keep that in mind. Cons. <sighs> the title. This godforsaken title. Dragon Ball Super Superhero. It's repetitive, and I do not like it. I get the idea here. It's the Gammas, they are very superhero themed. I understand it, but come on guys, come on. This isn't as serious a complaint as some other things I have to say, but 
As someone who watched this series as a little kid, and am only just now getting back into it, I would have liked to have seen a story focused on Goku and Vegeta. I've been hearing reviews from fans who feel very refreshed to see a story that doesn't focus on those two, and actually focuses on characters that, that have been, well, not very focused on for a very long time, and have been very underdeveloped, specifically Piccolo and Gohan. And while I do understand that, from my own perspective, as just a lapsed fan, meh, I would have liked to have seen Goku and Vegeta. Luckily, I've got probably dozens of movies about Goku and Vegeta to watch instead, so I'll be fine. Vague spoilers for these next two, so feel free to skip ahead to this time code if you'd rather not hear that. While I found the Red Ribbon guys to be actually pretty entertaining, I found the Dr. Hito character to be pretty confusingly written. He initially seems to be a bit of an impish character who means well, but doesn't necessarily think his plan is all the way through. Then comes off as someone who, while not fond of Red Ribbon, is perfectly okay with working with them because they're both sinister people. And then he becomes someone who's so terribly regretful of working with them, despite willingly agreeing to work with them. I'll be curious to see what will come of this little guy in the future, but I also wouldn't be too upset if this is a character that just doesn't come back either in the Dragon Ball Super series or the next film in this franchise. The big something that Red Ribbon eventually has to release to stop the heroes is just not terribly interesting. There's no real character to it. It's just the thing the heroes have to punch and blast a lot to save everyone. Which on one hand, yeah man, it's Dragon Ball. What do you expect? But at the same time, I've heard lots of praise over the years of various villains of this franchise. Boo, Cell, Frieza, King Piccolo, to a lesser extent Vegeta and Beerus. And after a whole group of underwhelming villains, save for two pretty cool henchmen, this big something being a non-existent character just isn't that interesting to me personally. So yeah, as someone who hasn't watched this series since I was still in elementary school, I really enjoy what I saw the other day. It's not groundbreaking, it's not revelatory, but it was a fun way to kill a Friday afternoon when I didn't have to work. And now I definitely feel like going back and watching some more Dragon Ball, so mission accomplished, Mr. Toriyama. I'm gonna give Dragon Ball Super Superhero a 3.5 out of 5. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed this review, and if you did, be sure to stick around for when I step back into the world of shonen anime in a couple months when I do a review for the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! series, along with a whole bunch of other good stuff I got in the pipe. Like, subscribe, comment, share the video, click notifications, and then have yourselves a great day. Take care, everyone. Woodstock, out.